Oh, that's perfect. So now when this little bass melody comes back, it almost sounds like it's carrying on the vocal phrase when the vocals go out. And then when the vocals stop, you get your fix for it because the bass melody carries what the vocals were doing. And they're just those similarities are just good, catchy songwriting. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Low End University. Friends of the Enemy is from the band's sixth studio album, Hard Rock Bottom, released in 2002. That's a great album name. Now, this is the second time this has happened to me. I had no use for a name on my list and the band N-U-A-F-N. It's an acronym for the same band. This got me with Rich Kids on LSD and RKL as well. But I digress. I've seen the name Matt Riddle show up a lot in the comments. And I'm realizing he was the original face-to-face -face bass player. And I've been meaning to get back to them. So let me know what track I should do from his era. But our patrons have recommended this track from this band. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Friends of the Enemy from No Use for a Name. Pretty. Okay, it's like my ritual now. I never know if these bass intros are coming back. I'm gonna hear it one more time. You know, this almost reminds me of Blink-182's Carousel I did a while back. It's so cool when you can take just a three chord progression, but in the bass, you kind of have a bass note. Sounds like he's going, but that little melody on top actually sounds kind of tricky. I'm actually not sure how he gets that stretch because I hear E over G. Okay, one more time. I want to get it down. Okay, that's that's a tricky one. I don't know if he's doing that stretch or playing it down here. But you have this really good cadence melody. Really nice loopable kind of melody there. Bass note under it. Okay, let's let it play a bit. That's cool. Oh, I see what he's doing. I'll let it go a bit. Sounds like a good P bass tone, wide open. I like the vocals a lot. Okay, something that caught my ear, and I always listen for this now when there's a bass intro. This happens in all genres, but I've been kind of hyper aware of it in some of the punk songs with these bass intros. It's usually pulling from the vocal melody a little bit, and I hear that exact kind of cadence here. Listen to this. No one is safe inside. It's kind of like right out of the bass intro. And what's really cool about this concept, it's like chicken or the egg. Did the bass intro come first and the vocal melody kind of use that as a starting point? Or was the whole song written and then the bass intro kind of comes last? Pulls from the vocal melody, introduces your ear to that melody early on in the song, and then when the chorus kind of comes in or a verse, you're like, that has a sense of familiarity to it. I've definitely talked about this in a lot of recent videos, but that one really caught my ear. Really good vocal. Let's keep going. Those vocals groove there. Like that. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. So now when this little bass melody comes back, it almost sounds like it's carrying on the vocal phrase when the vocals go out. 
So that's just very smart melodic placement, if you will. Just put it in one instrument, sing it. It's like, okay, I kind of just heard that. And then when the vocals stop, you get your fix for it because the bass melody carries what the vocals were doing. And they're just those similarities are just good, catchy songwriting. Nice. <laughs> I want to get that bass thing down. Uh, it's some weird stretches there. I don't know what that fourth root is. I'll learn it later. Yeah, real poppy progression here. One, five, six, four. It's catchy, right? Gotta get a pick out. See, that sounds a little different there. I love to go to the minor two there. And it can almost make the song feel like it went to D minor because, you know, it's just a B flat in D minor, which would be F major. So again, it's, I'm not saying they're changing keys, but it's an effective way to kind of have a different sound within the same key when you avoid a chord like that. Cause they've been C, G, A, F, C, G, A, F. Then they go to this minor two here. Little bits of silence are effective. Ooh. It's almost like the bass intro came back, but a little bit abbreviated. It's like he almost just watered it down a bit to go with the kind of the more halftime bridge or interlude feel because at the intro it was da 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 you know just kind of driving simplified some of the notes added some longer notes but i still hear some like intervals and double stops going on there really cool Really nice. Really good melodies in the vocals. Kind of got this wrapping up the song, dual melodies going on. I'm always a sucker for that. Uh, bit of a reprise. That line right there is right out of the bass intro. That one. Good stuff. Three, three, two, three. Good driving. Good way to drive at home. End on the four. Interesting. Sometimes the video I do right before another video, it's kind of fresh in my mind, maybe what topics I talked about. And the last video was Space Hogs track in the meantime. And I remember remarking on that one that the bass intro that was in the verses really set the song up, but 
The song didn't really pull anything from the bass intro in my mind the way this one did. This was kind of the opposite of that where the bass intro started the song and that little melody established on top was actually called back to by the vocals and then it kind of traded between other instruments. And both songs were great. It just shows you the diverse approaches that bands have with songwriting and there's really no right answer. So, you know, just a lesson there. If you're writing a song, there's no rules. Whatever sounds good because both of those approaches were effective and still highlighted the bass, which is important to me. But what a cool bass intro. I'm not curious how he kind of fingered that, but really nice. Set up with a nice melody. You heard the melody. That was a catchy song. It kind of had like that bit of a skate punk innocence to it. Really clean vocals. Uh, that's more up my alley. But this was a fun one. No use for a name. I've heard this band name a lot. Thank you guys for recommending them. Thanks to you patrons for helping me choose the track. And don't forget, I'd love to go back and check out Face to Face and hear Matt Riddle back in those days. But thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Patreon, come find us. I do full album reactions over there. We've done a lot of punk and also have some bass lessons and tone preset downloads if you're into that type of thing. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I love you all. We'll see you next time.